After studying about the various concepts of current, now let's see what the great scientist, that is, he is a German scientist named George Simon Ohm states. He formulated a very basic law that produced a relationship between the current and the voltage. And the law which he stated is known as Ohm's law. He stated according to this law that when the electric current is passed through the metallic wire, then it is directly proportional to the potential difference developed across the two ends of the wire provided the temperature remains the same. So, what is the parameter associated with it that the temperature remains the same? Now, according to the law, I am going to write a very small statement and the statement is that the current which passes through the metallic wire is directly proportional to the potential difference across the two ends of the wire. So, the potential difference is noted by capital V. If we reverse the two equations, that is V comes here and I comes here, so then also it remains the same. There is no change in it. Now, if I am going to eliminate this proportionality sign into equality sign, so according to the rule that if the proportionality sign converts into the equality sign, then equation is multiplied by a constant and this is I. So what is this constant? This constant is called resistance. So the formula of Ohm's law modifies into V is equals to I and resistance is written as capital R. So, it becomes capital R. So, this is the formula or we can say the statement associated with the Ohm's law. Now, if I need to rearrange this equation as capital I is equals to V upon R. So, I rearrange it and make capital I the subject of the formula. So, you can see from this equation that the first point that we can conclude that capital I is directly proportional to capital V which is your potential difference. Okay, now how this directly proportional is constituted? In that condition the numerator, this is a numerator and this numerator when it is compared with capital I as it is in up, so I am talking about the numerator, so this is directly proportional. Okay, if I am talking about denominator that is capital R, so in that condition it becomes inversely proportional to capital I. So, denominator is inversely proportional and numerator is directly proportional. So, according to this formula, capital I is directly proportional to V. V is the potential difference. That is, if capital I increases, so in that condition, capital V also increases. Second conclusion that we can draw from this equation that capital I is inversely proportional to resistance. So, we can say so that if capital I increases, if the current increases, so it is notified as there is a decreased resistance in the circuit. So, these are the two conclusions that we can draw in the case of Ohm's law. Now, let's talk of the constant in Ohm's law that is the resistance. Now, I have already told you that the resistance is written as capital R and this proper formula for it which comes from the Ohm's law. That is if we make the R the subject of the formula, so it becomes R is equals to V upon I. Now what is the unit for resistance? The unit for resistance comes from the formula itself. That is this is a potential difference. It is measured in volts. Okay, this is the current, it is measured in ampere. So, what will be the resistance unit? It becomes volt per ampere. Now, this volt per ampere is given a specific term and this specific term is called ohm. Okay, so what is the unit for the distance? That is ohm. And how this is represented? The ohm is represented by this particular symbol. And this particular symbol is called omega. Now, from this formula, how you will define resistance? The resistance is defined as the ratio of the potential difference 
created across the two ends of the conductor divided by the current flowing through the conductor apart from that this is about the definition from the formula but if i ask you that what is resistance in common if i ask you then the answer is that resistance is the obstruction or the obstacle which is provided in the circuit okay what do i basically mean by obstruction by obstruction i mean like if we are walking on the road and if there is a huge stone placed in my path okay if i am walking freely so that stone offered me as a obstruction okay if i have to walk further then i have to remove that stone away from my path so in the case of electric circuit for the current to flow freely the resistance provide the obstruction to it and in order for the current to move freely it has to work against the resistance now another example is the frictional force if we have to move forward so the frictional force always acts in the opposite direction that means the frictional force provides the opposition for our forward movement and by a mechanical pressure of our leg we overcome the resistance offered by the friction so that means that the resistance is nothing but to stop the continuous flow of current or in simple words we can say that this resistance is your obstruction so this is all about the resistance now i have told you that current is directly proportional to potential and v is equals to ir is the ohm's law but how the george simon verified what he has stated in that condition let me state you a very simple experiment so this is the experimental setup what you have to do you have to replace the battery source okay first let me try this connection with that of the plus minus 1.5 battery okay when i took a battery of 1.5 and as soon as this key gets closed that is now the switch is closed so the current start flowing in it in that condition when the current start flowing in it the ammeter has a particular reading the voltmeter also has a particular reading so in the first condition the reading across the ammeter is 0.12 ampere and the reading across the voltmeter now it becomes 0.3 volt in the second condition when we place two batteries okay these are the two batteries each of 1.5 volt back to back that is in series so now the voltage source has increased that is 3 volt so in the second condition the value of ammeter and the voltmeter certainly change obviously so in that condition now if we look at the display of the ammeter so it reads to 0.2 ampere and if we look at the display of voltmeter then it reads to point 5 volt now similar is the condition that is the third case when we use three batteries now if i use three batteries and each battery is are of 1.5 volt so in the third condition the ammeter has certain specific reading and the voltmeter also has some different reading now the ammeter reading is in this condition turned to 0.3 ampere and the voltmeter reading is 0.75 volt so this is all the reading that we have recorded now in order to prove what ohm's law have told us we need to plot these values graphically so our next step is to plot all these three quantities graphically now what we have stated we tabulated okay in that condition number of batteries i am talking about the first column we have used three batteries that is 1 2 and 3 and in all the batteries there are different readings of ammeter and different readings of voltmeter so when we use the first battery of 1.5 volt the ammeter reading is 0.12 ampere when we use the voltmeter reading then at that condition the reading is 0.3 volt now if i ask you that what will happen in the case of second batteries then the reading modifies to 0.2 ampere and the voltmeter now reads to 0.5 volt similarly for third battery that is three 1.5 batteries the ammeter reading is your 0.3 ampere and the voltmeter reading is now 0.75 volt you have to find the ratio of v upon i the corresponding ratio that is for first case for second case for third case 
केस नाउ फॉर ऑल द थ्री कंडीशन यू आर गोइंग टू फाइंड द रेशियो दैट इज वी अपॉन आई नाउ इन द फर्स्ट कंडीशन वी हैव टू वर्क अपॉन वी अपॉन आई वट इज वी इन दिस कंडीशन इट इज पॉइंट थ्री अपॉन आई इज पॉइंट वन टू नाउ सॉल्व दिस वैल्यू यू विल गेट 2.5 and what is the unit for it? it is volt per ampere now similarly for second case also you have to find v upon i v is your 0.5 divided by 0.2 now your answer is 2.5 again so it becomes 2.5 volt per ampere similarly for this the third condition v upon i again now in this condition it is 0.75 upon the current that is 0.5 3 on solving again you will get 2.5 volt per ampere now you can see that at all particular cases the value is coming constant so we can prove that v is directly proportional to i now in order to show that it is a straight line or a uniform graph you have to first plot all the values which is written in the tabular form into the graphical form now first let's draw a graph Now this is the graph. At x-axis we measure the current, which is in ampere, and at y-axis we measure the potential difference, which is in volt. Now just plot the value one by one. That is point one two ampere. This is point one two ampere, and the potential is point three volt. So this is the point where they coincide. Now the current is point two ampere, and the potential is at point five. So this is point five, and this is point two. Now this is the point at which they coincide. The third is the case at point three amperes, and the potential is at point seven five. So now this would be the point. You have to join all these lines. So on joining this line, you can see that it forms a straight line that represents that V and I are uniformly spaced. So we can conclude that V is directly proportional to I. and v is equals to i r where r is your constant now the value for r if i ask you what is the value for r that is v upon i at any particular instant you can calculate the value of r that is for first condition also 2.5 is the value for r in second condition also the value of r is 2.5 similarly for third condition so what is r in this condition it is 2.5 volt per ampere or we can say 2.5 ohms so this is all about the ohms law